and the medical component, the medical considerations, uh, become extremely important, perhaps paramount to such a trip. Michael Collins was one of the astronauts in the iconic Apollo 11 mission, during which humanity embarked on its first lunar exploration. His role in the mission is often overshadowed by the triumph of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Yet he holds astonishing revelations about eerie encounters they faced on the moon, unspoken incidents that have remained concealed until now. What is this information that he possesses, and what motivates him now to reveal decades-long secrets? Stay tuned as we unearth the Apollo astronauts' previously hidden narrative as he breaks in tears, suggesting that the moon is not what you think. Apollo 11 accomplished humanity's enduring aspiration to tread on the moon, a celestial body long admired from Earth. This mission was revolutionary during the 20th century, led by the brave astronauts Neil Armstrong and Aldrin Buzz. That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. This emblematic phrase, spoken by Neil Armstrong as he embarked on his inaugural lunar stride, is widely known. He was joined in this meaningful endeavor by his fellow astronaut, Buzz Aldrin. While both men rightfully hold their places as enduring symbols of human achievement, there is a third, lesser-known astronaut named Michael Collins, who also contributed to the mission. His role was to occupy the lunar orbit within the command module, a vital but less spotlighted aspect of the mission. Michael Collins skillfully piloted the Apollo 11 command module in lunar orbit while his fellow astronauts gathered moon rocks. Without his integral role, one of our most significant triumphs could have ended up a colossal failure. Although Michael Collins didn't enter the spotlight by walking on the lunar surface, he was the mission's backbone. Across ancient civilizations, the moon has carried profound cultural and religious importance for humanity. Various cultures have meticulously monitored lunar phases to facilitate agricultural and calendrical pursuits. Additionally, the moon has often been intertwined with deities and mythologies. Also, ancient Greek thinkers and philosophers like Anaxagoras and Aristotle utilized telescopes to scrutinize the moon, initiating an initial phase of lunar exploration. This early period laid the groundwork for lunar studies. Yet it was during the Renaissance that a more systematic observation of the moon emerged. This era fostered a systematic study of the lunar surface enriching our comprehension of its distinctive features. Fast forward to the middle of the 20th century, this knowledge underwent further evolution, signifying a pivotal juncture in the space race rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union. The initial push into lunar exploration involved the launch of unmanned probes, such as the Soviet lunar missions and the American Ranger and Surveyor programs. These endeavors yielded valuable insights into the geological makeup and conditions of the lunar surface. However, they also stoked a genuine desire to extend human presence to the moon. This aspiration was significantly amplified during the Cold War era, when the rivalry between the United States and the USSR in the space race symbolized national pride and technological supremacy. In 1961, against this backdrop, the U.S. embarked on the audacious Apollo program. Its objective, to successfully transport a man to the moon and ensure his safe return to Earth before the close of the decade. This endeavor was a daring challenge, necessitating substantial resources, innovation, and courage. The multi-stage Apollo program included an interesting array of developmental and testing phases. These included suborbital and orbital flights, complex rendezvous and docking maneuvers, lunar orbiting and landing simulations, and complicated extravehicular activities. The crowning achievement of the Apollo program was the historic Apollo 11 mission, which commenced on July 16, 1969. The crew comprised Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. After reaching lunar orbit, Armstrong and Aldrin detached from Collins in the lunar module named Eagle. Collins continued his orbit within the command module named Columbia. On July 20th, 1969, the Eagle descended to the lunar surface, captivating millions worldwide as Armstrong took that iconic step, delivering his now-famous words. 
Joined by Aldrin, the two explorers spent approximately two hours on the moon, conducting scientific experiments, collecting samples, and planting the U.S. flag. They also held a conversation with President Nixon via radio. Their remarkable accomplishments were celebrated with a plaque that underscored the momentous occasion. Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969. A.D., we came in peace for all mankind. After reuniting with Collins in lunar orbit, the triumphant trio embarked on their journey back to Earth. On July 24, 1969, they successfully sp general. He was born in 1930 in Rome, Italy, where his father, a U.S. Army officer, worked as a military attaché. His upbringing was marked by frequent relocations due to his family's military career, taking them to various countries and states. Collins's educational journey led him to St. Albans School in Washington, D.C., where his fascination with aviation and astronomy was kindled. He graduated from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point in 1952, opting to join the Air Force. He subsequently embarked on a career as a fighter pilot, participating in missions during the Korean War. From there, he attended the Air Force Test Pilot School at Edwards Air Force Base in California. There, he engaged in the testing of diverse aircraft, encompassing jet fighters and bombers. In 1963, NASA selected him to join a select group of astronauts, alongside Buzz Aldrin. This led to a period of intensive training for the Gemini and Apollo programs, endeavors that sought to achieve crewed orbital flights and historic moon landings. Collins's inaugural space mission occurred in 1966 when he took on the pilot role for Gemini 10, partnering with John Young. Together, they executed two rendezvous with other spacecraft and conducted two spacewalks. Collins was initially designated as the backup command module pilot for Apollo 8, the pioneering mission that orbited the moon. However, Collins encountered an obstacle in the form of a bone spur on his spine. Dance of astronaut roles, Collins embodied the persona of the background worker. Yet this term contradicts the weight of his responsibilities. On Apollo 11, he assumed the command module pilot, CMP, role. As CMP, he steered and maintained the command module Columbia, a vessel that would be the pivotal mothership for the lunar landing module. In the expanse of the cosmos, Collins ensured the coordination of the mission's success. What were the specifics of his responsibilities? Here lies the intrigue. Collins wasn't just an idle observer while in lunar orbit. His principal duty revolved around meticulously maintaining the trajectory. Yet, Collins's job was not without its challenges. While Armstrong and Aldrin ventured onto the lunar terrain, Collins spent approximately 21 hours aboard the command module, orbiting the moon. It was a period of solitude that might have unnerved many. But remarkably, Collins described this experience as quiet and isolated, marked by instances of profound introspection. When Armstrong and Aldrin wrapped up their historic moonwalk, they re-entered the lunar module, which rose to rejoin Collins in lunar orbit. The two spacecraft rendezvoused and docked, allowing the astronauts to return to the command module. With the crew safely back on board, Collins again swung into action, orchestrating the journey back to Earth. He adeptly operated the spacecraft's systems, including navigation and propulsion, to ensure a precise re-entry trajectory. Ultimately, on July 24, 1969, the command module re-entered Earth's atmosphere, executing a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. The crew's retrieval by the USS Hornet marked the triumphant conclusion of the Apollo 11 mission. From this, didn't set foot on the moon like Armstrong and Aldrin, his contributions were indispensable in facilitating the safe return of the entire crew to Earth. In the wake of the groundbreaking triumph of the Apollo 11 mission, lunar exploration underwent extensive advancements and accomplishments. The USA's Apollo program spearheaded a series of subsequent missions, Apollo 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17, between 1969 and 1972, in which more astronauts landed on the moon. There, they conducted experiments, collected samples, and explored the lunar terrain. Interestingly, while the Apollo program surged forward, another significant player in lunar exploration, the Soviet Union, pursued an alternate path. 
They opted for robotic missions that focused on sample returns and surface exploration. Despite the notable contributions of the Apollo 11 mission to lunar exploration, it's crucial to recognize that venturing to and from the moon was not a simplistic journey. As history unfolds, it's revealed that not every aspect of these missions has been disclosed. This brings us to the core of this video, unanticipated and eerie encounters that remained shrouded in secrecy until recently. These mysterious incidents remained concealed until Collins shared some of these experiences, shedding light on their impact on humanity. What exactly did Collins encounter on the far side of the moon? And how do these encounters influence our understanding of the cosmos and ourselves? The area on the far side of the moon is often called the dark side, even though it receives sunlight just like the near side. This area has captivated scientific curiosity and exploration. This intrigue is well-founded, as the far side boasts several unique attributes that set it apart. One notable characteristic is its shielding from most radio signals from Earth, owing to the Moon's rotation and positioning relative to our planet. This unique trait renders it an optimal spot for radio astronomy and unobstructed universe observations, free from terrestrial interference. Distinctive visual features also differentiate this region from the Moon's near side. It displays a notably cratered appearance, alongside a more rugged topography. In contrast to the near side, which showcases prominent dark planes known as Maria, the far side has fewer expansive features. Notably, one of the largest and most ancient impact basins in the solar system, the South Pole Aitken Basin, is on the far side. This region holds profound significance for scientists as a window into the Moon's formative history and the forces that shaped its surface. The far side of the Moon presents a valuable environment for scientific inquiry. Its geological attributes and ancient impact sites offer invaluable insights into the Moon's origin and evolutionary trajectory. By studying this realm, researchers deepen their understanding of cratering processes and the broader history of our solar system. It's anticipated that the far side of the Moon will emerge as a focal point for future lunar exploration. This terrain, relatively untouched by previous missions, holds untapped potential for groundbreaking discoveries. Furthermore, it stands as a prime spot for hosting lunar bases or observatories in the future. A tangible manifestation of this exploration drive is NASA's Artemis program. This initiative aims to send astronauts to the lunar South Pole, a prominent region of the far side. As humanity's pursuit of lunar exploration continues, the moon's far side remains a captivating frontier. It is brimming with the promise of revealing new insights into the moon's history, formation, and the broader celestial processes that have shaped our cosmic environment. But let's talk more about Michael Collins's encounter on the far side of the moon. As he orbited the moon, awaiting his fellow astronauts, his command module slipped behind the moon's far side. All communication with Earth was severed instantly, leaving Collins completely isolated over 300,000 kilometers away from home. This event reinforced the radio-silent attributes that define the far side of the moon. It also birthed the phenomenon known as being radio-silent. In essence, the moon's far side is shielded from most radio signals from Earth. This translates to an inability to receive radio signals from our planet at this particular location. This intriguing feature is a direct consequence of the moon's synchronous rotation. It takes nearly the same duration to complete one rotation on its axis as it does to orbit around Earth. As a result, the same side of the moon is perpetually facing Earth, while the far side remains concealed from direct radio communication. The moon's synchronous rotation stems from complex gravitational interactions between Earth and the moon. This alignment is why we consistently see only one face of the moon from Earth. This rotation pattern dictates that the moon's far side is always oriented away from our planet. Radio signals, including those employed for communication with spacecraft and satellites, travel in straight lines. When these signals encounter a solid object, like the moon, they can be reflected, absorbed, or refracted. However, this interaction only occurs with the side of the moon facing Earth, which is exposed to these signals. Consequently, the far side of the moon functions as a natural shield, 
impeding radio signals from reaching the lunar surface facing away from Earth. This minimizes radio interference and fosters a quieter electromagnetic environment on the far side. This intriguing attribute of the Moon's far side has significant implications for conducting radio astronomy observations. Radio astronomers can capitalize on this shielded region to investigate cosmic phenomena and analyze signals from space without the disruption caused by terrestrial radio signals. Recognizing the potential of this discovery, spacecraft exploring the far side of the Moon necessitate relay satellites stationed in orbit around the Moon. These satellites facilitate communication between the spacecraft on the far side and mission control on Earth. By maintaining line-of-sight communication between these two points, these relay satellites bridge the communication gap, enabling us to explore and uncover the mysteries of the Moon's far side. China's Chang'e 4 Lunar Exploration Mission is one of the most remarkable expeditions to the Moon's far side. Initiated by the China National Space Administration, CNSA, and launched on December 7, 2018, this mission accomplished a historic milestone. It marked the inaugural instance of a spacecraft achieving a successful landing on the far side of the moon. Chang'e 4's lander achieved a soft landing within the von Karman crater, located in the South Pole Aitken Basin on the moon's far side. This marked the first time a soft landing had been accomplished on this side, providing a unique opportunity to study the geology and terrain of this region. The mission also deployed the U-22 rover onto the lunar surface. The rover is equipped with scientific instruments to analyze the moon's composition and terrain and a ground-penetrating radar for studying subsurface structures. U-22 conducted comprehensive surveys of the lunar surface, investigating its geology, mineral composition, and rock and regolith structures. These insights have contributed to a deeper understanding of the moon's formation and evolution. Chang'e 4's location within the von Karman crater facilitated the examination of an impact crater and its immediate surroundings. Impact craters are particularly intriguing to scientists as they hold vital clues about the moon's history and surface processes. As part of a biosphere experiment, the mission carried a container known as the Lunar Mini Biosphere. This container held cotton, rapeseed, potato, Arabidopsis seeds, fruit fly eggs, and yeast to test the feasibility of plant growth in the lunar environment. These accomplishments underscore the strides made by the Chang'e 4 mission in expanding our understanding of the moon's far side and yielding valuable scientific data contributing to lunar and planetary research. It's important to acknowledge the achievements of missions like Apollo 11, which are enduring benchmarks for all subsequent lunar explorations. The impact of the Apollo 11 mission profoundly affected Michael Collins's perspective. Viewing Earth from space gave him a humbling and unique view of the planet's fragility and unity, a phenomenon known as the overview effect. This shift in perspective often leads astronauts to develop a deep appreciation for Earth's interconnectedness and encourages a sense of global cooperation and environmental stewardship. Decades after the Apollo 11 mission, lunar exploration remains a vibrant field. Recent accomplishments include China's Chang'e program, which spans multiple lunar missions. As examples of recent lunar exploration progress, Chang'e 3, 2013, successfully deployed the U-2 rover on the moon's surface, while Chang'e 4, 2019, successfully executed the first soft landing on the moon's far side. India's Chandrayaan program has also left a notable mark, with Chandrayaan 1, 2008, confirming the presence of water molecules on the lunar surface, and Chandrayaan 2, 2019, deploying an integrated package of an orbiter, lander, and rover. In addition to these accomplishments, NASA's Artemis program is dedicated to advancing human lunar exploration with a strong emphasis on sustainability and the potential establishment of lunar habitats. The upcoming Artemis missions are strategically designed to place astronauts near the lunar south pole. This endeavor aims to capitalize on the extensive insights gained about the moon's historical context, geological attributes, and potential resources. Without Collins' experiences and revelations, these vital details about the moon might have taken too long to discover. The cumulative effect of these missions is a foundation for forthcoming explorations and the prospective utilization of the lunar environment.
these collective efforts continue to pave the way for new space explorations. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing space videos like this one.